everybody, this is Rose of Sharon, and I'm back again with another book review. I just recently read Hearts of Fire, Eight Women in the Underground Church and Their Stories of Costly Faith. And the foreword's done by Gracia Burnham. This is a tale of women in different countries <clears throat> professing the gospel, evangelizing in places unlike the United States that... They're actually persecuted. They are beaten, tortured. Some of them are even murdered <laughs> or martyred. Some are raped. It's just, it's awful. It's absolutely horrendous. A lot of the things that they have to go through. I think my angel's going to sing. <laughs> are you going to sing, my angel? He may. Because the fire trucks are going by and he doesn't like the fire trucks but anyways um it was a bitter book to read but still there's there's hope with <laughs> I read a, a very serious book a note <laughs> Now he's he's going to interrupt it with frivolity. <laughs> Go figure. Anyway, like um, blessing of the butterflies, there were moments in Hearts of Fire that were very <laughs> very difficult to read, and it actually makes me happy to be a Christian over here in this country. <clears throat> But there are a lot of things that are happening now that kind of make me shake my head and just pray that everything doesn't get turned upside down. But don't say I didn't warn you. Just stay awake. Stay vigilant. That's all I can say. I, I don't want to predict doom and gloom, but... There are certain things that I notice and I try not to profess too much just because I don't want to deal with the consequences, if you know what I mean. It's just I want to keep it on the down low. <laughs> I'm trying to be strategic. But nevertheless, these women underwent some just absolutely terrible strategies in the countries of their origin and these stories happen in different years as well so it's all very intriguing it's just heartbreaking in certain points but despite that it's a it's an extremely well written book and it'll give you glimmers of hope even dare I say a beacon not a glimmer but a beacon if you ever think that your life is hard, that your journey is insignificant, it, it really isn't. It, it might seem small in the long run. You can't really understand what the, the plan is from... It's just like one of my favorite movies. <laughs> and I don't know if I've quoted this movie. I probably have, but... Single Thread in a Tapestry... Those color brightly shines. It never sees its purpose in the pattern of the grand design. Of course, I've always loved that, and I thought, yeah, it's it's from Prince of Egypt. But still, and I just remember what my dad used to say about how God can see the top of the tapestry. We can't. We're looking at the the underbelly of it and how distorted and and gnarly and just grotesque for lack of better adjective that it looks to us just incomplete misunderstanding <laughs> well we can't we just our minds are too finite it's there's no possible way that we could possibly comprehend all this without having our brains <laughs> blow up from sheer input of knowledge but despite that this actually gives me a lot of hope. It gives me um, a sense of calm and 
also that. Excuse me, it's late. In a sense of um, just knowing that I am where I need to be and I'm doing well in all that I set my thoughts toward. Even though I may have to do a little bit more to get a little bit excess for my income. I mean, I am getting by. I am doing very well. Uh, <laughs> I had to, to pay to get my car fit. That that actually took kind of a chunk out of my my paycheck and it hurt a little bit. I, I've got plenty of money. I'm, I'm going to survive. I'll be fine. It's going to be a little bit of a lean month, but that's okay. That's completely all right, I I can survive. I I've, I've been able to budget, so I know what I'm doing now. But <clears throat> that was a sizable chunk. But this gives me a lot of hope, gives me a lot of promise, and it makes me happy to be alive here in the states. And I pray for my sisters overseas that are evangelizing in places such as these and find themselves and places that are less than accommodating to Christian missionaries or people who decide that they hear the call and they want to preach and or they want to stand up for their faith and they almost face getting executed and the first story just it, it broke my heart because the young girl she was just a teenager she had to stand up for all of her other captors in Bhutan and in order to do that she unfortunately had to be raped even though she was married she she was raped and she found herself with child and her other her daughter her elder daughter their their son was killed in jihad sadly but <clears throat> the daughter found her mother in the kitchen with a knife poised at her belly ready to to abort her own child and she said mother stop this child has done nothing he is innocent so she thought about that and didn't go through with killing herself and the well actually she wanted to, to kill the child because she had no love for the child she didn't have any love for the man that she was forced to marry but she did it so she could spare all the other girls lives that they were there was a um, a really horrible transaction that was made in that process but if you're interested in the lives of these women and just knowing that there are other stories that are similar to this all over the world even now it it just it gives you pause definitely and also it gives you gratitude a whole depth of gratitude that is um, fathomless it really is when you ponder all this just being born in the states and I'm not saying that we're better than everybody else but when it comes to that when it comes to freedom of religion <laughs> I have to say that we we do get some things right on occasion um, not much I have to say about the book itself uh, there were moments that were really depressing in, in the book unfortunately and it just was gut-wrenching to to plod through but I, I did it despite that just because I thought I want to know what happens to these women I, I would like to see how their faith is and their faith is rewarded tenfold and you see stories like this all the time it, even in the Bible you, you read the tale especially of Job if you read that story which is actually the oldest book in the Bible and you realize well Satan himself was bargaining with God. And I mean, I know it's an old story, but I, I'm not going to go through it because you probably heard it before. You don't want to get bored. But despite that, Job lost everything. And it reminds me of my mother. My mother certainly did have the patience of Job on many occasions. And I just, I, I liken her to Job. And I think she also had great faith. And my father... He too was a man of great faith and 
<laughs> I, I think about that a lot and I I pray that I can be the the individual or citizen of society to help others and that's why I decided to go back to school to get a master's of business administration because I have two business ideas that need to come to light they they have to exist I mean even if they don't if I just put my foot if I jam my foot in the door just so I can have enough of an opening to get both of these businesses off the ground there will it will help countless people both young and old and those who have gone through the correctional facility to have a second chance to be a citizen to make something of themselves the first will deal with that the second is more of uh, what I like to call um, the forgotten of society I hate to use that term but sometimes elderly people they're they're not and I really can relate more to people who are older just just because of who I grew up with it's I'm definitely a hipster and I know I say that jokingly in a self-deprecating way but it's true <laughs> I am a hipster true blue and a hippie at that too so it's it's kind of a very interesting dichotomy at that notwithstanding I just I think that our our silver foxes they they deserve a place to go they deserve an opportunity to continue their education they they deserve an opportunity to excuse me to enjoy their life well into their golden years and and not be that far away from their family it wouldn't be a separation of um parents and their children and and being a caretaker who yeah that's nothing i would wish on anybody trust me and i, I know that sounds terrible but honestly i'm glad i was able to to have the experience because it's um it's it's made me understand what it's like and i am i can empathize with people who have uh become physical orphans in the physical not orphans eternally but just orphan for lack of better definition but we're never really alone and i i think that's what the book really strives to to teach us if if we realize that there's a force beyond us, beyond our contemplation, beyond our our um, our comprehension, basically. But he looks after us, and I know that's me waving my little flag again. But pardon for, for me for doing that. But despite that, the book is absolutely tremendously done, and I couldn't recommend it more than I do. And I just think it should be shared. And for those especially who don't know the circumstances, keep these keep these women in your prayers. Keep the villages and all the different endeavors in your thoughts and prayers. That's basically all I can say about that. Until next time, live long and prosper. Ciao, Tuthi.